Good morning, wherever you are, even if it's afternoon. <laughs> I'm Gary, it's Binary Jazz, my co-hosts. Um, you know, we, we've set the standard of having ridiculous introductions. They were um, ridiculous. Who's an avocado farmer? Well, Allison's an avocado farmer. So, <laughs> always. Um, and, but I, I was going to say, I feel like I'm always going to produce as description <laughs> of the folks. I um, did. So Chris is a produce manager for the local um, co-op. Um, you don't know how close to reality that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's why it's not really exciting, right? Cause it yeah. Feels, no, I can totally see that. Um, <laughs> Chris is a co-author of a super exciting um, REST-enabled plugin that's available at binaryjazz.us. Allison is a co-author of a super exciting REST-enabled uh, genre-generating plugin available at binaryjazz.us. And uh, I'm really excited for this episode. Don't sell yourself short, Gary. There's your code in there too. Uh, if if <laughs> I just refactor. So, yeah. Well, it's 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 code. Uh, so we released this thing. Um, we put it up on binary jazz called the genre nader. Uh, if you listen to the show, you will know how rambly and tangential we get. So this sort of came out of a rambly tangential conversation that evolved into what if there is a generator of random genres, um, because genres when you get down into the really like the, the woods uh, there's some really obscure, bizarre genres out there. So like anything can be a genre basically. So uh, find out more. <laughs> yeah. So find out more. Um, so yeah, it's a rest enabled uh, plugin. You can actually use the uh, rest API that's on binary jazz. There's a page on our website, uh, contribute and or download from GitHub. And that's all we're going to say about that. Cause you can go to the website and that's not what this show is about. It's not about code, but it's a cool thing anyway. Yay. Okay, so the topic this week is less of a, a stumper, I think, and more of a, where do you stand? What, or actually- Wait, two, two things. Before we go into the topic, <laughs> are we at episode, what are we at, 111 or 101? 101, because- so At episode 101, do we feel like people understand the premise of the show enough to say that Allison's going to introduce a topic that we know nothing about and talk about for until we run out of time? Well, now you've said it. You up. just said it, so there you go. Well, all right. You gave me I the perfect gonna... intro. <laughs> so, the topic this week da -da 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 -da, is the law. Oh, drum roll. I see. I see what you're doing. Uh, the law of attraction. The law of attraction. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is a broad topic, isn't it? I know. There's lots of room. Which is one of the reasons I chose it. And also because I feel like there's, there's opinions to be had. Because I know I have a lot of opinions. <laughs> yeah. So obviously law of attraction is a scientific law about magnets. Um, and it's, it's pretty cut and dry. Uh, <laughs> positive magnet poles attract negative magnet poles. Right? You went science-y. Is it not a science thing? No, it I mean, it's, it's open-ended, right? <laughs> it is open-ended. So, okay, that's, that's the science-y <laughs> definition. And it's very hard to argue with a scientific law. Uh, you Wait, kind of, law? If you're on the wrong side of the scientific law, you're basically on the wrong side of, like, life. A lot of things. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so go on, but I got to come back to the law thing in a minute. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, go, go with your law thing. Right. So I was listening to a podcast um, the other week and I'm totally going to butcher the logic behind this because it's been, I don't know. A week. Uh, weeks. Yeah. Or more possibly, <laughs> or maybe it was Monday. I don't know. Um, so, maybe <laughs> yesterday. It's really hard to tell. 13 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> the, the idea was um, that at a really, um, like the scale we operate at, um, gravity makes an awful lot of sense, um, but <laughs> no, we don't that's the best quote. I think we can all end there. <laughs> on a, on a um, universal type scale, like gravity, gravity, the the laws of gravity don't don't 
scale exponentially as one would expect. So on a universal scale, gravity is kind of um, not quite a really good um, thing to use to measure stuff with. <laughs> um, so I mean, but like for our purposes on Earth, where we are, gravity is pretty doggone useful. And what we understand about gravity is useful. But once you get like in a universal sense and you're traveling through space time, um, gravity doesn't really interact the way we expect it to. And we don't know why, but we accept it as like close enough for our earth purposes. Yeah. Well, once you get into space, then things get kind of wacky anyway. I mean, yeah. um, it's, yeah. it's, it's less like, it's less like the vacuum of space and more like, a weird goo <laughs> that you kind of just float into and it does weird things sometimes. I, I yeah, I, um, <laughs> there's something about like Einstein's theory of relativity, like being more accurate, but not on a gravitational scale and all that way that all that stuff worked out. Anyway, gravity is kind of like magnets, right? No. Like mass attracts mass. Is that not, not all that's happening in magnets? Like, is there just not extra mass that we can't identify? I yeah, don't. I, I'm not a magnetist. Magnetician. I, Magnetician. Mag, yeah, you have a magnetic magnetist. personality. Do I? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the obvious. That's the obvious uh, direction that you go with this conversation after you talk about magnets is the, is the attraction of of people and personalities and such things. And that is worth thinking about. Is it? About. Yeah, was that dinging sound you're on computer telling you that it's um, like top of the hour? Uh, yes and no. So my computer, I have it set up, you know, like in, in the Apple world, you can set it to speak every hour. <laughs> um, so it says it's 11 o'clock, which I love because, you know, sometimes you get caught in uh, an attractive Wikipedia article or 17 more and you lose several hours and your computer reminds you, hey man, you've probably been killing too much time on this. You're yeah, I have, I have, about <laughs> I have my, uh, like, so I have like my alerts and stuff, uh, set to like for calendar reminder things to, to remind me at nine o'clock because that is when my day starts. Got it. So it was the top of the hour, but not every hour. But not exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like radio on the hour right. every hour. <laughs> but um, back to the topic of magnets. We kind saying, of covered this a little in, um, in uh in our slack in some private messaging about um like the tribal nature of humanity right that we want to associate with the people that look and feel and sound like us right that mm. there's like an inherent um thing about us as people you know that 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 there's uh fear maybe is the word about mm -hmm. difference and it, it's a conscious effort to um overcome that and to override that i don't know is that animalistic is that like an instinct thing Maybe. Um, I, I think it, it's I, a bit like tribal, I guess you yeah. want to be included and like fear think, of being excluded. I think like, probably from like an evolutionary yeah. standpoint, like uh, your this is your tribe, this is your people. You look similar because that is where you are, and so anything that looks outside of what your tribe looks like is potentially a threat. So you have this sort of inherent. Uh, fear uh i guess uh about things that or a you know self-preservation thing Are you break things over there attracts empty teacups you see that's why gravity is very important <laughs> apparently it's still pertinent where you are but the, yeah it's very pertinent here but the good news is, is that it was a mouse that dropped instead of my coffee so it's a win that is, good. That is definitely a win <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> I, I think I think even more so, like on that, on the the like the the um, like being drawn to people that are similar to you. It 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 feels like sometimes like it's it's not like it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical thing, right? Like brain is an important part of it, and that's mm -hmm. that's a real nebulous thing to define um, and get a grasp on. Like why why do we feel um, the three of us are associated in a meaningful way enough to, to podcast from three corners of the globe, close corners of the globe, but three corners, you know, I mean, we're, we, we, our association is um, through a previous employer and, and, you know, we don't really hang out and stuff on weekends and um, 
lead generally very different lives. So what's the attraction that causes this? I was almost going to say this to work, but this episode might not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your way of breaking up with us? <laughs> 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 Please don't break right. up with this, Gary. <laughs> it feels like a, bear, a real slow burn to you trying to. Trying to I, uh, is your like, this. <laughs> like, we really have nothing in common. I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> well, we clearly all share a similar <laughs> sense of amusement and humor. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's sort of a, actually, I mean, one of the directions that that was going, it kind of went in different directions at various times, but one of the directions that it started going into uh, was this, like, similarity attracts people, but also I think what you were trying to articulate is that difference also is attractive, which then, which is kind of a thing that I've been thinking about, which is um, the the idea that opposites attract, which in a literal sense, it's probably not strictly accurate. Uh, but if if you were attracted to people that were exactly the same as you, you would not have very good conversations. Um, you, well, would, you would you know, just be talking I'm... to yourself. And I do talk to myself a lot already. So like, but that's a different thing than talking to somebody else who has the exact same ideas as me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you kind of hit on it too. Like, there is an... Um evolutionary nature to this, right? Like, if you were attracted to people most like you, boy, there'd be an awful lot of inbreeding, mm -hmm. you know? Um, which wouldn't be great for the survival of the species. Um, but that, I mean, that, how is that true? I mean, like, West Virginia and Tennessee still exist. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> I say that lovingly. I, I mean, I, I think, but, well, about Tennessee, not necessarily about West Virginia. Um, Hollywood is in Tennessee. I'll have yeah, you. Know. Tennessee, Tennessee's got some some positives to it. Um, I, well, I don't know. I, I we think just sure. lost every listener in West Virginia. Yeah. I'll have you know. All the listeners. <laughs> all all the listener. I think um, also the differences that can be attractive are even just varying levels of knowledge. Because like even though I might be very similar to someone in like ideals or core values, even if there are different levels of knowledge within those things. I find that really interesting because I have something to offer as well as they have something to offer and the, it's like the back and forth and the exchange. Curiosity is like an important part of that too though, right? Like if you're not a curious person, we've already established you're a curious person. Um, the, if you're not a curious person though, like you have like a, like a nature of curiosity, like a curious nature, you know, then, then then that overlap kind of doesn't, you don't establish where that overlap is or where those differences are, right? Right. So for people that aren't, aren't inquisitive by nature, then, then, then I guess where does, that, where does that play in, you know? I mean, it, it would take a lot longer to understand where that shared knowledge space. Well, and then that, that like mannerism might lend itself more to them being around people who offer up knowledge without them like without them in, like inquiring about it. So they're there to absorb and they need to be around personalities that just offer it up without being prodded for it perhaps. Or maybe they just don't even care to absorb. It's not like a conscious thing. Yeah, I, I guess it probably wouldn't be a conscious thing because I, I do a lot of things that I don't think about and then I try to understand why I do them, you know, later on and, and I use that to define, like, you know, define myself. but really I just do those things and I just want to name what the heck they are you know like I'm curious I ask a lot of questions no you're just kind of annoying and ask a lot of questions but <laughs> you know it's it's sort of how you frame it you know um, but the fact is is like but you're also you want to be around people who will answer your questions because you could be around people and you're just asking tons of questions and if no one's answering them or like honoring that space then like you'll just be like nope <laughs> yeah that'll be frustrating because then you're you won't feel listened to basically or you'll just get really confused because you won't have any answers you want <laughs> do you think do you think um the concept of attraction is 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 uh is different in introverts and extroverts yes okay cool <laughs> <laughs> we're all in agreement. <laughs> 
<laughs> in what way, I guess I should ask? <laughs> a follow-up question. <laughs> I, just, I just established I asked a lot of questions, so I thought I would try not to, but I can't help myself. <laughs> no, that's good. That's what, that's what keeps us going. In what way are introverts and extroverts attracted to different people? In, in what way is their experience of attraction different? Uh -huh. I think Let that, like your question back to I oh. think that <laughs> speaking as uh, mostly an extrovert in a room full of introverts, uh, I think that the things that are attractive to you are about other people are different. Um, and I say that as like so I I, I framed this as a as being an extrovert but I'm really kind of a I don't know I guess recovering extrovert it's weird how things can evolve over time I'm definitely like I definitely always was an extrovert growing up but living in a household full of introverts primarily I mean I guess it's half full it's it's weird because my, my daughter's definitely becoming a an introvert and my like my partner Aaron and my son is definitely more of an extrovert. Um, he thrives being around other people and he wants to be around other people. So, so I guess we're sort of split, which is kind of interesting. Um, and maybe there's a gender thing in there too. I don't know. Um, but living with uh, my partner for so long um, has made me scale back the extroversion quite a bit and become much more of a middle of the road ambivert uh, with extroverted uh, leanings. Um, because I definitely get, I mean, it's all about where you get your energy, right? Um, and I definitely get energy from being around people and interacting with people. And if I'm not around people, um, then I am less energetic and positive, I guess, than I would be if I spent time around other people. I, but I, I, I also, understand. I also can relate to being alone for long periods of time. Um, and I understand conceptually that for most introverts, it's very much the opposite, that being around other people is extraordinarily draining and just like basically a chore. And, it's, and it's, it becomes obvious when like we have kids and parents of kids over for play dates and stuff. And we have some friends that are like extremely extroverted. And like after they leave, it's like, <sighs> you know, like I, I've done a day's worth of work and, and, I've spent like an hour with this person. Um, I had a conversation with the CEO of my company a couple weeks ago. Um, and he was like, yeah, I was an introvert. And I just decided that I wasn't going to be an introvert anymore. That kind of struck me like, I, I, I don't know. I didn't really have, like, have a response. To, oh, that's interesting. But I, the more I think about it, I think your point is, is right on, right? Like it's that, it's that energy side. Like it's not, it's not a conscious decision. Because an introvert, I can decide that I'm going to go um, mingle like a mofo. Um, but it's still going to be you know, draining and exhausting yes. to be around people. And it is. And yes. So an interesting corollary to that is uh, my father-in-law um, has told stories about, so he's also very much an introvert. He's also uh, a former minister, uh, very active in the community. He knows a lot of people and talks to a lot of people. And um, he has told the story of, of just, kind of a similar sort of making a decision to not be this way. And it's not like he's not an introvert. It's like he's making an effort to engage with other people despite his introversion, despite how, it, how draining it is because what, he wants to engage in those ways. Would you say he's successful in that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He, so, I mean, I guess maybe, maybe it's like, you know, that's like an example of the wisdom of age or something because – Obviously, in that case, CEO's case, both are successful at being introverts who are now performing as extra, extroverts. I mean, it's like, it's like the, um, there was a TED Talk oh, several years ago that was uh, basically, um, it wasn't about, it wasn't the Susan Cain one about introversion. It was the one about um, sort of like confidence in the workplace sort of, and she's basically, the, 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 the idea was like you fake it until you make it, and then you, like you have this idea you see yourself and you pretend to be confident and positive and successful and you do, do all these tricks until eventually you just feel that way because it's habit oh, was it the one with the power poses yes <laughs> uh, 
I love that phrase, fake it till you make it. That was one I used to use a lot with, um, with employees that were doing um, things that they, you know, felt like was like way beyond what they were able to do. Um, so, I mean, I was always just like, I don't know that you don't know how to do it. Like fake it. Like, you know, I mean, maybe if I notice that there's something wrong, I'll help you fix it, but fake it and pretend like act as if, right. Is a, uh, was my battle cry for a long time. And then I got into code and, can't and then really you realize everybody's it. faking it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you can't really BS it, right? It works or it doesn't. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I don't know, though. Like, I, I find that people are often surprised when I say that I identify, like, I self-identify as an introvert. Because they're like, oh, but you can talk to people. And I'm like, I know. I'm very aware that I can hold a conversation. <laughs> um, and then what they don't see, though, is when I, like, after I go out to lunch or like have to do a thing, it's like I have to go home and like have a serious recuperation because I'm just exhausted by it. Um, so much so that I have to be really conscious of my like social schedule in a way that if I don't have a proper amount of time to recuperate, I'll burn out and then have to cancel other things that I would like still like to push myself to attend. And, like, so, so talking about this, like I, I know when I'm involved in like big social situations, I carry a lot of stress on my shoulders. Talking about it, and my, my shoulders <laughs> up and I stretch out a little here. Oh, social so as, as I think the, the two of you both identify as introverts, um, this podcast, Silent. like does... Does, is this podcast, does this podcast qualify as something that would be draining for you or is it different because we're not physically occupying the same space? I, I'll say it's different because um, it's virtual. Like, like my interaction is with the two of you um, and I just pretend the rest of it doesn't happen. Like the whole recording and putting it on the internet. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I mean, yeah, I but I mean to, uh, even even like putting episodes. putting the broadcasting part of this aside, just just yeah. you know the three of us, like, is that different than? I mean, obviously, it's different than a room full of people. Um, yeah, so it's totally different because line? we have like a a relationship. Like, I don't get exhausted hanging out with my wife and kids, mm -hmm. uh, but or or my or extended family because there's that like relationship, and because there's that relationship, you're like, this is fine. Like, we could go chill on the couch for hours and and talk or not or whatever. Like, I feel like there's there's that um, natural communication that develops after you know someone um, that that just exists, um, and and it doesn't. It, it's not exhausting because you know there's there's like a safety factor inherent um, that doesn't. I don't think in the real world. The real world, like <laughs> I'm just a, I'm just a bot. That's the that's the, this this whole uh, podcast is about existentialism, apparently. Right? Yes. Well, I mean, that's what everything All about, about, isn't it? it? Yeah, I was, yeah, that's where we're headed. I wouldn't find this, I don't find this as exhausting as socializing in, in quote unquote real life. Um, <clears throat> probably because <coughs> it's a physical space, but it still is like any, any conversation I get drained by. Regardless, even, even with my partner, with um, close friends, maybe less so with people who are close to me because when people are comfortable just like sharing space without um, like verbal communication or just having those silences and like that, um, that like quiet shared time. If people are, if we're on that level of friendship and partnership, then it's, which obviously does not serve a podcast well if we all were just to like <laughs> sit here quietly, <laughs> um, which I think we could. <laughs> that would be the most podcast. introverted podcast ever. It's just three people oh. sitting and doing other things. I would like to do an episode of all three of us sitting like in the living room with a recording device set up. And it could be a new ASMR kind of thing <laughs> for a podcast. I'm just saying. Yeah. Big hit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, following this, I don't, uh, it's not like I need a huge recovery period. Um, but it sounds like you do need some. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And also, like, it is me stretching boundaries in regards to, like, the recording aspect, because generally I hate being recorded or photographed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, but that's, that's what my therapist would say, a healthy pushing of boundaries. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the thing is, is there's a huge range of 
uh, experience on this scale. It's not like a, a toggle. It's not like the feminist, the, it's not like the dial up to feminism uh, <laughs> where there's only two settings, <laughs> raging feminist and uh, uh, complicit in my own dehumanization. Yeah. Which, if you don't know that meme, uh, too bad for you, I guess. <laughs> Ooh, link you, you, probably, you probably find. I was gonna say you probably find it on Twitter. Um, yeah, yeah. We probably should link it in the show notes. I guess now that we brought it up. Uh, <laughs> now that I brought it up. <laughs> that bothers me. If I feel like it should be a toggle, like a switch. Why like, should it be a toggle? It's not a toggle. It's n like <laughs> nothing. Nothing in in human experience is a toggle. Autism is a spectrum. It's not a toggle. It's not like I understand, but the, I think the point. Would be more sexuality, well suited in gender that particular is not a situation toggle. as a toggle. That's all. But I don't know. I mean, I look at it from like a. I wonder what the impedance is on that on that knob, right? Like <laughs> the UX perspective. Missing the point. <laughs> <laughs> also, I love. I love. I think what I love about this is that you're. It's very binary. <laughs> <laughs> That's true too. I um. But but I mean, in that case, like it's not even. It's not even. Um, it's not the user experience. It's more like the technical, like what's what's happening behind that that knob, right? Like, I, I, a lot of. I don't know. I'm, I'm way overthinking this, and I realize that. So no, that's your that's your inquisitive nature, though. Um, Serves you well. So law of attraction, right, is kind of supposed to be the topic, and uh, <laughs> uh, I really need to get better at. Um, bringing us back around the topic. No, well, you another aspect of law of attraction is the whole kind of mindset of like, when you conceptualize something or if you believe something, it'll somehow command the universe to involve it in oh. your life. Yeah, that's fun. That's interesting. Because that's something uh, I've definitely been- uh, Which I have some qualms with, but- Yeah. yeah. So let's hear the qualms. I mean, that's something that-, yeah. that uh, I don't know. Uh, I identify with that idea. Uh, I used to have a theory of reality that, uh, which sort of encompassed religion, uh, which was basically that the collective unconscious of everyone manifests things in the real world. So like base, like basically if, a gazillion, like if the entire human population of the planet believes in a higher power, then that higher power exists because it's become manifest by their collective energy in believing in this thing. Which is totally unquantifiable. It's just a thing that right. you could say. Is like, oh yeah, I totally believe this with everything and, and it, 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 it's a thing. Yep. I don't know how far uh, down that road I go these days, but I definitely think that, uh, I mean, at least in oneself, the belief of uh, a thing or faith in a thing does have actual uh, manifestations. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the placebo effect, right? Like, I took a pill for five weeks and it did, it's a sugar pill, but like I felt better, you mm -hmm. know, and then you tell me it's a sugar pill and then everything goes to shit. Yeah. <laughs> I do love when people are like, aren't you worried it's a placebo effect? And I'm like, not if I feel better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like why, why would I be worried if it's a placebo effect? Like maybe it is, but it's working. So <laughs> yeah, like I don't, I don't care about <laughs> what's causing it. I care about the outcome. Right. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm on board with that. Yeah. Um, I feel like, I mean, I, I, I think I like the idea of the law of attraction overall. I think I just see people kind of utilize it to the nth degree where I, I start to find it problematic in some circumstances because then it's like, oh, well, you didn't really believe hard enough and that's why this <laughs> thing happened, um, which just feels really victim blamey and unfortunate. Um, but it's, it's, it's a lot of that, like, because I think mind over matter can really triumph in certain situations. And I think, like, that's what I, that's why I got out of witchcraft. Yeah. <laughs> but I also think it's like, it's like it can be used in good, good ways. And then in some situations, I'm like, 
like, um, oh, what's the author's name? Uh, Louise Hay, um, who wrote the book, You Can Heal Your Life, um, which I did not finish. I think I threw it across the room, which I do not do with books. I, do, I treat books with respect most of the time. Um, but her whole thing is like, like, like health, especially it's like her thing was like, oh, well, like if you're having problems with A, B, and C, um, it's because you weren't like, if you have problems with your thyroid, it's because you're not speaking your truth because that's from the throats and like you need to, and I'm just like, that's not why people get thyroid cancer. Like that's not a thing, (laughs) (laughs) but, um, anyway. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point too. I mean, that's like kind of like a root thing in almost all religion, right? Is that you can do a certain thing or whatever that is, right? Thoughts and prayers, obviously, <clears throat> are always timely. Um, and, and, and that's meaningful in some way, right? <clears throat> um, and, um, it, and, and, and then like, which, which leads to logic to the inverse, like you didn't think and pray hard enough, right? Because mm-hmm. bad shit still happens. I mean, thoughts and prayers and that- are, are a thing because we literally can't do anything else. So it is a way to control your environment. It is a way to say, I am doing something. I am sending thoughts and prayers because I literally cannot go to Florida or wherever the shooting was yep. and actually have a tangible effect. And also it's a cop out because like the only thing I can do is, oh, I, I can't do any, I can't actually do anything. I can't stop anything. I'm a politician. I can't actually, you know, like make the NRA pull, like not give us money. I can't file, like, I can't like pass a bill that's going to prevent people guns from being in the hands of people and I've totally gone on a, a thing, but whatever. So I'm just going to send thoughts and prayers because that's what I can do, you know? Yeah. And, and I guess like to that end, the, 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 the trap there is though, is that, is that you, at some point you believe that your thoughts and prayers are not valuable. Well, there's, there's <laughs> value. I mean, med- we'll think about meditation, right? I mean, you would, would you would, would you argue that meditation is not valuable? I mean, I, I spend five minutes most mornings, in silence, and sometimes that manifests itself as, um, you know, deep, like self-reflection, and sometimes it manifests itself as like just a gray haze. It's nothing more than, I mean, nothing. You know, not really pondering anything. I mean, I I try to avoid like any thought about work or family or you know tangible things that I need to work on, but just you know. Think but I think about that's, Harry, and that's. I think that's valuable, but I think <clears throat> I, I think it's a different component than like sending thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Like, I think the, I think it affects you on an individual level, which then could like lend itself well to you being able to instigate change in your own sphere. But I don't think necessarily, in my opinion, I guess, I don't think necessarily that like it helps like your meditation. Yeah, I mean, affect spinning, my day. spinning it back to, to witchcraft for a second, um, <laughs> because I, you know, wanted to do that. Um, the thing that I found when I was, learning about and uh, practicing, I guess, uh, the dark arts or paganism and Wicca was that the things where I was trying to affect other people and other things tended not to work strangely. But the things where I was trying to affect and change like myself and my perception of things tended to work better. And I th- then I, I eventually taking a step out of, out of, you know, the, the context of, you know, Wicca, paganism, whatever, witchcraft as a, as a religion, um, I was able to identify like, oh, well, that's basically just like saying, I, I want to make this change and I'm going to do these steps to manifest that change in my life, whether it's burning a candle or, you know, meditating or like going outside and being in nature. Like I'm, I'm doing a thing to, to manifest a particular change in myself because it makes me a better person. And so then I stopped doing the practicing part because the other stuff is more fun and I don't need to like write a, I, you know, a goal on a piece of paper and put it in a candle and burn it and then put the ashes inside of a plant and then see the plant grow and then kill the plant. I mean, I don't need to do that. <laughs> um, I I would argue though that it's totally not a thing that happened at all. Not at all. <laughs> okay, it's cool. <laughs> um, we um, I think though that there is there is a conversation to be had, and not the remaining three minutes on um, the value of like shared conscious focus on something. But that's I'll leave it at that. Huh. That's a lot heavier. I think we have three questions to cover before we get out of here. We better do it quick because Gary's in panic mode. <laughs> <laughs>
So this is the segment of the, the show where we answer questions that have been submitted to us or that, that uh, Allison comes up with off the top. Oh, God, please quickly ask the questions. Uh, <laughs> and we watch as, as Gary completely panics. I know, I'm just going to ruin probably the most entertaining part of this segment. Um, okay, so first question. Uh, two songs that you put on a make-out mixtape. Oh. The fact that it's a mixtape means you probably are taping it off the radio. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, two songs on a makeout tape. Uh, see, Depeche Mode was always my go-to, but I can't do that anymore. Um, I'm gonna say probably something by Sneaker Pimps uh, off the Becoming X. Um, probably like anything. <laughs> um, although uh, the song they pulled from The Wicker Man is is a good one, um, and. Uh, something, again, pretty much anything off the album, uh, I believe, Pure by the Golden Palominos. That album is incredibly sexy. Last time I made a mixtape, it would have to be Losing My Religion Twice by R.E.M. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> there's so much wrapped up in there <laughs> there's, yeah there's that that's we don't have enough time to psychoanalyze that <laughs> there's a lot to unpack um, see you later <laughs> what's the most anxiety inducing game from your childhood two minutes left in zoom <laughs> <laughs> um probably hide and seek I, I mean just like the hiding part and the being found was like nerve-wracking I feel like all games, all board games from my childhood are pretty anxiety inducing. Um, mine, went, mine was called Perfection and you oh put God. it into a thing and it was timed and if you didn't yes. do it, it exploded in your face. Yes. Yeah, I was Simon, Simon is pretty bad too. Um, and I think that's it. Is that two, three questions? That's oh, no, two, I but, didn't know I was but we have less than a minute. I was just, I was wrapping it up. I was watching that. Oh, good. Comment. Thank God. for you, Gary. Woo! <laughs> it's good talking with you all. I've missed you. Great to see you again. <laughs> we'll be... We'll I met you too, not the listeners. For uh, nice everyone you. else in two weeks, and we'll be continue recording uh, Binary Jazz in the meantime. Nice. Or something. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.